The next parameter is called the solar heat gain coefficient. Um, it is extremely important to understand this parameter because it is a very important property of glass uh, which is talking about the amount of radiative heat transfer that can actually uh, come through the glass into the building. So, as part of the radiation that comes out from the glass, it's, it adds a lot of heat into the building. So, to optimize this, uh, this parameter is extremely important when it comes to heat ingress inside buildings. And we want to balance the amount of light that comes in with the heat, right. So, it, ideally we would want more light to come in because we want more of daylight and it has been proven that daylight actually improves the productivity of people. So, the more the daylight, the better it is. And it also reduces the amount of electric power that you would want to use to power the lighting inside the building. At the same time, you do not want a lot of heat to come in to the building when you send, when you bring in sunlight. So, this parameter actually optimizes the two. So, the lower the SSGC, the better it is. But unfortunately, what happens typically is when you have your low SSGC lower, your visual light transmittance actually goes down, right. So, which means you are trying to put some kind of a coating or some kind of additive on the glass to make sure that your heat ingress is reduced. But at the same time, you are trying to also compromise on the amount of light that comes in. So, the idea is to basically create some kind of a balance between the two to optimize the envelope. So, that is important. And the next parameter is talking about the U value. The U value is basically the, 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 the amount of conductive heat transfer that can happen through a particular material, right. So, it is entirely dependent on the property of the material. So, if there is a lot of temperature difference between the, the two sides of a material, the amount of heat would directly be dependent on the U value of the material, which means the higher the U value, you will have more conductivity, which means you will have more heat that will come in. So, the idea is to reduce the U value so that you have lesser heat ingress from the wall or the glass inside the building. So, it is basically dependent on the temperature gradient between the two sides of the material. So, this is an important parameter when it comes to modeling envelope design. So, typically when we look at the U value, we typically look at the assembly of the envelope and not the individual component. For example, you will have glass and you will have a frame around the glass or you will have some material which will actually be around the glass to kind of create some kind of aesthetic effect or to fix the glass on the envelope. So, when we do the U value calculation, we actually have to take both the materials together because it is the assembly which matters. So, typically the assembly needs to be get uh, needs to be tested in a lab and you get the U value and then use that in your simulations to get a more accurate uh, perspective of how the envelope is going to behave when it comes to conductive heat transfer. So, here we are trying to see what are the different inputs that go into the tool the energy simulation tool. So, some of the uh, typical inputs would be the uh, you look at each parameter separately in terms of the envelope, the roof, the wall, the glass and then you put those properties of different materials in your uh, both the baseline case. Basically, most of the codes which, in, which I spoke about the ECBC or the ASHA 90.1 actually give you a prescriptive U value or SSGC that you should use for a particular envelope in a particular climate zone that you are going to put the building in. So, you will have to basically record those parameters as per the code and then you also look at your proposed design which which you, the elements that you are going to put in your design and start creating some kind of a comparison and see where you, you try to benchmark your performance based on the baseline. So, that is the idea of documenting and tabulating these different parameters depending on the climate zone of the building. So, we do have a lot of uh, software today which is available for energy simulations. So, this slide is talking about a lot of software that we have and the eQuest is actually a free software which is available and it can be it is fairly effective in doing a lot of energy simulations buildings. And most of these software use the DOE engine as the back end and only the front end is actually kind of variant depending on the kind of UI the user would be pref preferring. So, so, most of the software typically give you similar outputs when it comes to uh, simulation results and analysis. So, as I said earlier, the building envelope data, we are talking about various uh, aspects of the envelope and what are the different properties of the material that go into the envelope. So, we will document that for the baseline and the proposed case. So, the proposed case, as I said, is reflective of the actual building the post construction because you are trying to put in the actual elements that you want to put into the design in the proposed case. Whereas, in the baseline case, it is basically it is actually programmed to the code uh, depending on the energy code that you want to adhere to.
So most of these uh, baseline codes, um, we are talking about um, ECBC or uh, ASHRAE, we will actually try to limit the window wall ratio to 40 percent. And uh, the idea is basically to reduce the amount of WWR and they do not want you to and they do not enforce the design team to actually go less than 40. You can always have more than 40 percent of glass on the facade, but it makes it all the more difficult uh, for the design team because that it would involve a lot of cost. So, you are trying to increase the amount of glass and uh, it adds to the cost and also it adds to the uh, impact on the energy performance of that particular facade. So, typically they try to limit it to 40 percent and as a design team you are free to increase it beyond 40 and try to see how you can accommodate it elsewhere if there is a impact on the energy performance. So, uh, typically you will try, we will try to document these uh, elements, these properties of both the glass and the wall in both the baseline and the proposed case. And we can also model shading devices as I said earlier in various facades and see how the performance would change. So, the idea is basically to uh, run these simulations um, by varying various factors which includes the operations, the usage patterns, uh, the, cli the climate zone. You can even look at uh, locating a building in a different climate zone for that facade, how the variation would be. You can look at people loads, mechanical loads, all these loads can be uh, programmed and you can change and run various scenarios uh, by varying these parameters and see how the output of your uh, energy performance looks like and take decisions and it actually helps a lot in making you take the right decisions in design. So that is why energy modeling is extremely important to start very er at very early stages of the pre-design. So you get a fairly good uh, picture of how your decision making is actually tied to the actual performance of the building as you start elaborating the design. So, as I said earlier, most of these codes will actually try to limit the uh, window wall ratio to 40 percent and we are free to actually increase it depending on how they, the baseline code is basically derived from a lot of research and a lot of data from various projects and they keep revising these parameters uh, as and when the building performance changes or so these codes have various versions. So, depending on the climate zone uh, you are in and the performance of buildings, the codes actually get more stringent. So, today if we are talking about ASHRAE 90.120.2010 and tomorrow the, the, when the next version gets released, the code gets more stringent. So, as we start programming to the baseline or simulating the baseline, your um, levels will actually go up and you are trying to actually model to a more stringent code. So, that is important to keep in mind uh, given the fact that uh, the construction duration actually goes beyond few years right in most of the big uh, big buildings that you are talking about. So, we have to keep in mind that the code also keeps changing and so as and when your construction ends your code may be more stringent. So, that is something that important to keep in mind. So, today as I said we have a lot of uh, weather data that is available today and many of the organizations like ASHRAE, ISHRAE and uh, other government organizations actually tie up with these or get data from the meteorological uh, institutes or the organizations which are local to that particular geography and try to uh, generate this weather data on an hourly basis, which means talking about hourly temperature, temperature profiles throughout the year. So, for the total of 8760 hours in a year, you have the complete temperature humidity profiles of that particular location. So, that goes into the simulation software. So, which makes it even more detailed in terms of providing uh, energy performance data hourly throughout the year. So, that makes it even more uh, involved in terms of and more accurate in terms of providing outputs with respect to energy performance. And most of these data is available free and you can download the weather data from uh, most of these websites which includes the meteorological department and the ASHRAE um, websites and you can get this data available for you. You can use this in your energy model. So, typically we are talking about green building rating systems are becoming very popular today and they try to uh, arrive at savings based on your baseline versus proposed case uh, energy uh, performance. So, you can actually create the baseline model for your building and the proposed case which is your actual building and see how better you are with respect to the code. So, as your energy savings actually increases, you are rewarded more uh, percentage of points uh, in most of these green building rating systems. So, they in fact, they give you a lot of uh, importance to the energy performance and more points are actually uh, 
given for better energy performance of buildings. So uh, here we are talking about different parameters in the proposed case or the proposed case which is your actual design of the building which can actually vary compared to the baseline. So you can either uh, change these parameters, your the design team is free to change any of these parameters and that change could either enhance or limit your heat transfer or it can worsen the energy performance or improve the energy performance. So there is a trade off. So you can actually do this uh, what if analysis of all these parameters. You can keep changing them and see how your energy performance varies. So that will give you a fairly good idea on how to go about your design and what to pick and what not to pick. So you have a lot of options you can run uh, with all by changing all these parameters and see how your building is going to perform. So that gives you a fairly good idea of the energy performance and also you have a good idea of how your uh, savings would be compared to the code. So that also helps you in trying to meet your uh, local code and your approval as well.